Hi everyone. Welcome to the second episode of Inside Elucidata. I'm Mukund and today we'll be talking about bio NLP at Elucidata. So biomedical NLP or bio NLP in short um is all about is trying to apply language processing and and text mining techniques to biomedical text. So a lot of problems like NER, document classification, natural language querying, Q&A, or any other information extraction problem. These all fall under the umbrella of bio NLP whenever you're working with biomedical text. In most cases, like the overall objective of these problems is to be able to extract useful structured information from textual data. So you can probably imagine why it plays such a crucial role in Elucidata's mission to structure and curate biomedical molecular data. Right? Uh, curation is something that involves a lot of manual effort and is a very time-consuming task. So uh, what we're essentially trying to do is, is that Elucidata is use bio NLP approaches to make this process more efficient and uh bring more automation into this process and with the goal of ultimately making it more scalable and scaling to millions of data sets and in this episode i won't be going to too many details uh about what sort of curation is all about or why it's valuable um uh, to learn more about that you can watch some of the other videos on this channel instead i'll give you a glimpse of what bio nlp is about and what are some of the challenges that exist in the field and how they're different from general language nlp and also uh, what makes elucidata such an exciting place to work at for someone who's interested in nlp and deep learning in general so one trend that follows from this increased availability of large language models is this shift in focus uh, from spending time and effort in tuning and optimizing the model to instead investing in the quality of uh, training data that is being fed into the model and uh, this approach which is also called data centric ai is mainly this the result of this realization that these models uh, as they get more and more advanced and better at doing their job the performance bottleneck for most ml pipelines is now the quality and the quantity of the training data and so you see teams investing more resources into generating high quality data and also in some cases finding creative ways to use quality data that's already out there right um, and there's an interesting example in bio nlp which sort of speaks to this data centric approach right so Typically there are two main types of data that uh, have traditionally been used to train biomedical language models uh first are these um, billions of scientific articles that are a very rich source of unlabeled biomedical text um and they usually used for pre-training models and the second source is these smaller task specific corpora that are labeled by experts they only contain sort of a few hundred examples right and uh, these are usually used for fine tuning the for a particular task and so most publicly available language models that you find they'll be trained on these two types of data uh, but there's another largely untapped source of high quality expert curated data uh, and that's these biomedical knowledge graphs also known as ontologies and so these knowledge graphs contain uh information about thousands and sometimes hundreds of thousands of biomedical concepts like diseases drugs um uh, phenotypes uh genes and proteins and for every concept you'll find um like their name their definition their uh, relationship with other terms etc and these have been largely underutilized for training language models but a lot of papers that have come out recently as well as experiments that we have performed internally they have shown that if you can find ways to inject the knowledge in these knowledge graphs into the language models 
then they can significantly outperform language models that are trained in the traditional way right so this this sort of example again highlights the importance of focusing on on data quality there's definitely some overlap between the kinds of problems that exist in both the domains uh, general language nlp and biomedical nlp but uh, there are also a lot of problems which are very specific to biomedical text uh, which make it so that you cannot just hope to borrow techniques from the language nlp and expect them to work here as well so one such example is how in in biomedical text there is a very heavy use of abbreviation short forms uh, and usually what happens is that authors would sort of define these abbreviations somewhere at the beginning of a document and then continue to use them uh, in the later part of the document uh, but uh, so in, in those cases you sort of have to uh, figure out just by scanning through the document what those abbreviations mean but there are also a lot of cases where authors don't explicitly sort of define these abbreviations and uh, then you sort of have to infer them from other clues within the text so for instance if you have a document where there is referring to a disease with the short form ad right that that ad could either mean alzheimer's disease could also mean atopic dermatitis right um, and if the author hasn't defined it explicitly then you sort of have to rely on other clues for instance if the document uh, has keywords like skin or inflammation then probably refers to atopic dermatitis uh, so yeah abbreviations are a huge challenge and you cannot really expect to do well in downstream tasks without first um, having some way of expanding these uh, abbreviations another thing that's uh, sort of different from general language text is that biomedical text is very synonym heavy and uh, so you have to use a lot of so you see a lot of uh, words and phrases which mm, sort of mean the or refer to the same real world concept uh, uh, for instance in in the case of drugs you could you could uh, if you have a drug like paracetamol uh, it could be referred to uh, with either paracetamol or one of its many trade names like uh, a tylenol or or panadol um and uh in a lot of cases you cannot just sort of look these uh keywords up in like a predefined vocabulary uh you have to figure out some more sophisticated ways of mapping them to like real world uh, world concepts finally a biomedical text is uh, just uh quite technical in nature for if you if you're a data scientist or um like an L- nlp expert um you might find it hard to understand uh, what the text is actually trying to say uh you might need the help of a domain expert to to be able to understand that and so that are working on these bio nlp problems they're usually interdisciplinary and uh, um if you're like an expert on the nlp side then work in close collaboration with uh, domain experts to be able to actually build something that's useful one problem which is still the one solved and means very technically challenging as well um is dealing with really long pieces of text um uh, a lot of state of the art models that are out there they they tend to work very well with text which are at like a couple of sentences long um uh, and uh, so you can train them on a lot of different tasks but they're constrained by you know the length of the text and uh, any task which requires sort of understanding a very long document as a whole um that is not something that state of the art models are are very good at doing um so th- there's a lot of scope in that area for uh, better model architecture or, or better the sort of training mechanisms and so another um 
uh, another sort of unsolved problem is being able to deal with data where you which is like a combination of unstructured text and some sort of structure so there there's a lot of data in the biomedical domain where uh you might have some information in uh, present in like a paragraph or two of plain text uh some information might be present in the form of a table or a figure of some sort and uh, uh, even though humans can uh, look at each uh, piece of information and reason about it as a whole uh, models are usually designed for like one or the other and so that that is uh, another area um where there's a lot of scope for improvement and there there's a lot of data out there which exists in this form uh, a lot of very valuable data so one thing that's really great about working here is that lucid data really strives to create the right environment for ml practitioners to succeed this this boils down to three things right first is having access to good tooling when you're working with these large deep learning models um uh, can be very slow and and time consuming process right and having the right tooling can often be the difference between spending a week training and debugging a model versus being able to do it uh, in under an hour and at elucidata we have access to powerful gpus some great ml ops and experiment management tools and just in general use a fairly modern tech stack right so the tooling aspect is taken care of second thing you need for success i feel is a uh, label data to train your models with and we are generating these large volumes of really high quality training data in house uh, with the help of um, a large team of expert annotators so as a data scientist you'll never be in a position where you're sort of scrounging around for label data to train your model or, or do some experiment with right um and and thirdly we also have a a great team of scientists and domain experts working at the company who are always there to sort of help you out if you have any domain related questions which you definitely will if you're working on bioenergy problems right so i feel like these three things the tooling um access to annotated data and domain experts these really create the the right environment for uh, ml practitioners to succeed right another thing that's very exciting for me is just the kinds of problems that we're trying to solve with bioenergy uh, not only are they challenging but some of them are quite novel and and something you might not find in like an academic setting right uh, so i'll give an example of of some questions where sort of grappling with right now so we are trying to curate biomedical data sets uh, at scale right and it's really important that this curation happen as efficiently as possible and so we are sort of asking ourselves how can we use bio nlp to significantly bring down the human time uh, it takes to curate one data set how exactly do we approach this um optimization problem in the first place like do we use models um uh, just to assist humans in some way or can we have uh models say curate some of the data sets and um uh, get others curated by human experts um and if so how do we pick who does what and and how do we ensure correctness for uh model curated ones right and is it possible to maybe adopt some sort of active learning loop where models continuously learn from how humans curate data so so as to maximize the model's learning right and and so yeah th- th- these are these are some of the questions that uh, we are dealing with uh, on a day to day basis um, and i think that's what makes lucid data such a an exciting place to work at